Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Squire Offset Telecaster SJ. Let's get into it. I've always thought that the Fender Mashup series of guitars was a really cool concept, whether it was the Parallel Universe line from a few years back, or the Squire Paranormal line of which this guitar is part of. And as the series has progressed, it's really cool to see the evolution of these mashups, and in this case we have the Telecaster and a Fender Jazzmaster. Not entirely new for the Parallel Universe line per se, but I don't know if I've seen one that has this blend of features before. Now I actually had a different Paranormal guitar on order and unfortunately it showed up damaged, so I sent it back of course, and I just kind of sat on the idea until something else popped up that I liked. Now this guitar came out about a month ago and I believe this color in particular was an online exclusive that was just released a few days ago. So. We'll see if I end up liking that color or not, or if it ends up biting me in the butt like it did with the Gibson Victory model where I ordered the online exclusive color and ended up trading it out for the really cool Iguana Burst model. So anyway, let's look into this guitar a little bit more and see what's going on. I'm pretty sure most sub-750, sub-$800 guitars from Fender come without a gig bag or a case. So what you get in this instance is a box. Now let's take a look at the unboxing from earlier today. So yes, yeah, so you've got a box here. It's honestly not the most protective thing, but in this case, it did the trick and I was pleased to see a blemish-free guitar come out. I've got a few manuals, some basic tools for adjusting the saddle height, as well as the truss rod, and maybe another one for the knurled knobs, if you want to remove those. I'm not really too sure. Guitar looks good though, I like this finish. So here it is, the Fender Squire Telecaster SJ model. This guitar retails for about $450. In case it's not completely obvious, it's mostly the Telecaster feature set on a Jazzmaster body, but what's a little different here is for the first time in the Paranormal series, you've actually got the Jazzmaster pickup in the neck position, whereas previous iterations of the Tele Jazzmaster guitar had the Tele pickups for both the neck and the bridge. Now in case you're wondering why it's called the SJ in particular, it seems that Fender decided that the single coil Telecaster pickup would be known as the S or single coil pickup and the Jazzmaster pickup would be known as a J or the SJ configuration. It's very confusing because if you were to look up just a Jazzmaster on the Fender site, it would have two of these bigger single coil pickups, but the pickup configuration would be known as SS, not JJ. Eh, it is what it is. Now, as much as I love the blend of the Telecaster and the Jazzmaster, I kind of wish they would have put a little bit more of the Jazzmaster feature set in here and had the lead and rhythm selection switch up here as well as the thumb wheels for the neck pickup. Now I understand that some people find that configuration to be a little redundant, but it is true that you actually get quite a bit of tonal variation if you were to select the neck from down here or if you were to set it from up here because it runs through a different circuit. But all things being said, I actually do think it does look pretty cool how it is right now. Now another thing that I also like about this guitar is the matching headstock. I understand some people really just want the plain maple headstock, but in this case, you know, with this being a unique guitar, I'm all for it to be honest with you. And speaking of the colors on this guitar, now from what I can tell this guitar is available in just three different finishes. This is the Fender.com online exclusive charcoal frost metallic finish, but there's also an Olympic white and an iced metallic blue. The ice metallic blue, that's pretty fetching too. And if you're curious, these are gloss polyurethane finishes, so they've definitely got some durability to them. And one more thing, the weight of this guitar, it's actually not too heavy, but it's not too light either. I'm getting a 7.65 pounds, or about 7 pounds and 10 ounces, so you can see it's not entirely too light, but it does feel relatively controlled in my hands here. It's not weighing me down or anything like that. Now if you're curious about the body of this guitar, it's made out of poplar as a lot of Squires are these days, which is a little bit different than what you'd find from a Fender American Jazzmaster body. But yes, this is the general Jazzmaster shape, and this guitar does take one of the more vintage shapes, or actually rather I should say, it doesn't adopt some of the new Ultra cuts that you get on the new Ultra models. Well, you're really only going to get this belly carve on the backside, and then just a little bit of arcing here on the upper bout where your arm would rest. Now that being said, you still get great access on this guitar all the way up to the last fret. And speaking of frets, this guitar actually only has 21 frets, not 22 frets like you might expect on a newer model that isn't necessarily marketed as a vintage guitar, seeing as it's a blend and it's completely new design, right? So yes, you've got 21 frets on an Indian Laurel fretboard, and that is of course paired with a bolt-on Fender maple neck here. 
Now these frets are listed as Fender narrow tall frets and I'm getting a measurement of about 48 thousandths in height. So really it feels like pretty much any other fret that's out right now from any other major manufacturer. Now, as I may have mentioned before, this guitar also has, of course, the Telecaster headstock, which is obviously very different than what you would find on a traditional Jazzmaster. If I can be honest with you, this is pretty much the only Fender headstock that I actually like. The one thing I've never really gotten into with Stratocasters or the Mustangs or any other Fender product is that big bulbous ball at the end of the headstock. I don't know why, it just always looked funny to me. Again, that's my own opinion. But the Telecaster headstock, on the other hand, I have always thought looks really cool. And so that's why my collection has mostly Telecasters and really only a Fender Aerodyne Strat because I thought the body was pretty cool. And that's another reason why, of course, I really liked this mashup in particular. Now, moving back to the neck here, this is listed as a Slim C profile. And indeed, what I'm getting up here at the nut is a 1.62 inches, which is a bit smaller than what you would find on the 1.65 spec sheet. Moving on to the first fret here, I've got a 0.82 inches. And then when we slide down here to the 12th fret, you get about a 0.90. Now this fretboard is listed as a 9.5 inch radius. And indeed I'm getting mostly that with a little bit of flat spotting around the center of the fretboard where the G and the D strings are. Now for the hardware, let's start down here at the bottom. You've got your Fender style strap buttons, of course, and yes, there's a matching one up here at the top horn. And then just over from that, you get to a metal Jazzmaster jack plate. And then moving to the front of the guitar, we get to our Telecaster style bridge. Now this is a vintage style bridge in that you've got three double saddles for your intonation adjustments. I can already see that some people are probably hoping that this guitar would have had individual saddles for the strings to get a perfect intonation or near perfect but unfortunately that's some of the charm of this guitar that you're going to have to learn to deal with if your e string's flat but your b string's perfectly intonated do you adjust the saddle to fix the e string throwing the b string out of whack or do you find a happy middle ground i don't know it's kind of a choose your own adventure now one thing that you can kind of do to combat that a little bit is adjust the height of the individual strings which you can do by rocking the saddle there but then you kind of mess with your action so Really, it's kind of just tweaking everything until the guitar plays and sounds good for you. Now, just like a traditional Telecaster, the strings are fed through the backside. There are ferrules here. I did have a little bit of an issue with one of these ferrules that just popped out. It would not go back in no matter how much I pressed it in there, it just fell right out. So I don't know if the routing was just a little bit too big for that one or what. And then moving on from there, we get to our pickups. Now we've got a Telecaster style bridge single coil here and the Jazzmaster style single coil neck pickup as mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, there's not really any data on these pickups other than the spec sheet saying Fender designed Alnico single coil. And you'll see when we pop these pickups out that there's not really a lot of information on the back side of them either, but I can give you the readings. Now for the bridge pickup, I get a 7.11. And moving on to the neck, I get a 6.65. And when I switch it into the middle, I'm getting a 3.49. So not overly hot pickups. Now let's talk about the control for these pickups. Now, of course, you've got your traditional Telecaster layout and then you've got a three-way selector with your bridge, your middle, and your neck, and then you've got a master volume and a master tone control. But these aren't just normal controls, they're actually both push-pull pots. Now these pickups are normally in parallel, but when you pull the volume knob, they're actually now running in series. And then when we pull the tone pot, now we've got phase reversal of our two pickups. Now something to note, of course, is both of these push-pull pots really only do anything when you're in the middle position and both pickups are active. Well, let's pop this thing off here and look at the backside here. And yes, you can see we've got our three-way selector switch right there. And yep, there's those two push-pull pots, of course. Where's the capacitor? I see, tucked around on the backside. Now I have noticed that there's a little bit of quirkiness with this system, and I don't know if it's my guitar in particular or if they are all like that, but let's say I'm jamming out to a tune and I've got the pickups in series mode. So I pull the volume pot. Now let's say this cool solo is coming up and I slam the guitar into the bridge position. No sound at all, it's completely dead. What's interesting about that though, is if I were to put it in the neck position, I still get volume out of the guitar. So I don't know if that's a quirk with just my model and maybe the pot is busted or if it's just on all of them. I actually shot out a note to Fender earlier and maybe they'll answer it before this review is done. I don't know. Whatever it is, I'll post it and pin it in the comments if they do answer me in a decent amount of time. Now another quirk that I've also noticed is that if I'm in the bridge position and I pull the phase reversal, <laughs> There's a microsecond of a dropout in the signal, and I haven't really noticed that if I'm in the neck position. I 
Again, I don't know if that quirk is unique to just my model or all of these Telecaster SJs. Anyway, moving up the guitar here, we get to the frets, which we've already talked about here. These are the narrow, tall frets. And then just up from that, we get to our traditional Fender style truss rod, which is buried in that hole here at the top of the fretboard. And then we've got a little bit of string trees there for our E and B strings. And then we've got our vintage style Fender tuners. Now, of course, I really wish they would have put the locking tuners on this guitar just because it's a newer guitar and locking tuners just make string changes so much quicker. But that being said, these tuners work totally fine as long as you know how to work with these slotted tuning machines here, which I know drives some people mad. Now these tuners, in case you're curious, are a 15 to one tuning ratio. So you get actually a pretty decent amount of precision out of it. Now there's just a couple of materials left on this guitar that I want to talk about here. Of course, you've got felt between the strap buttons and the body there. Then you've got a little bit of plastic as well in the form of this black pickup selector switch. And then you've got a three ply pick guard as well. This is a not quite cream, black, not quite cream. So it's really interesting when I hold this pick guard against the tablecloth here, you can see it actually has a little bit of a greenish glow to it or a greenish sort of hue to it. Assuming that there wasn't routing for the wires there, I think this guitar would actually look pretty cool without a pick guard at all. Maybe that's just my thoughts. But moving on from there, we get to our perloid block inlays on the neck there. These actually look pretty cool. I've always kind of had this idea of like Gibson had shapes and blocks and Fender had dots and that's just the way it was. But I've really come around. Now I've got some Gibsons with dots. I've got an ES with a dot. And then now I've got Fenders with blocks. So really anything goes these days. But moving on from that, we've got binding on the side of the neck here, as well as our dot fret markers. And then we've got a bone nut. And I think it's nice that they didn't skimp on that here on this $450 model. And then lastly, we've got the Squire logo right here at the very top of the guitar. And underneath that, it says, by Fender. So now I'm gonna do the sound test here and I'll cycle through a bunch of different sounds and I'll put all of my settings here on the side so you can follow along with me. But first, before we do that, let's check out the neck dive on this guitar and just see how that is. So this is a normal two inch guitar strap. In fact, I'd say the backside of it probably is a little bit more slippery than maybe the front lets on. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. All right, let's get into the sound test.
Well, there you have it, guys. That is my review of the Fender Squire Telecaster SJ model. Now, I've actually been playing this guitar quite a bit over the past few days. As some of you know, I'm kind of in the middle of making a... Well, I'm actually in the very beginning stages of making a new album, and since I know those songs the best, it's kind of fun to take some of these new guitars just through those songs and see how they sound. <laughs> Now I have to say that while I did enjoy these pickups, I did find that the neck pickup was maybe a little bit too bright for what I generally like in a neck pickup. And I'll admit, I've been ignorant about the Jazzmaster pickups until I did this review. I kind of always just thought they were sort of like copycat P90 pickups. I didn't realize that they are completely different animals. So I did go into this review thinking it was going to be performing like a P90. And that could be some of my disappointment there. But reading some of the comments on Jazzmasters in general, it does seem like the pickups are a little bit split in terms of the reaction. Now moving on to the bridge pickup here, I did feel that it has the spirit of a Telecaster bridge pickup, but it feels like this is maybe one of the newer, hotter pickups that has just a little bit more sizzle to it. The bonus push-pull features were very neat. I enjoy having more features on a guitar as long as they're not too confusing. I do think that some of these bonus features unfortunately aren't able to get fully utilized on a guitar that has one master volume and one master tone switch. So while you can pick up some of that phase reversal sound, you're not able to fine tune it like you are on a Gibson Les Paul with the phase reversal where you can kind of dial the individual settings for each pickup. But that being said, I'm still glad to have the option there because it does actually offer a somewhat unique tone to the guitar. Now when it comes to the actual comfort and playing the guitar, I had a blast on this thing. The neck feels really good. It plays really well also, considering I'm used to playing 24 and 3 quarter inch necks and this is a 25 and a half inch scale. I still think my fingers were able to glide around on the neck, no problem. I did have to adjust it a little bit after it arrived as some of the intonation was off and the action was a little bit high for my liking and I did change the strings to my preferred brand of strings. So my final thought is if somebody came up to me and said, hey, 450 bucks, is it worth it getting that paranormal guitar while it's out? Because I'm sure this is a limited run and probably not going to be around forever. I would say absolutely. As long as you're content getting a Telecaster guitar dressed up in a Jazzmaster body, and of course, you've got a Jazzmaster pickup instead of that little lipstick pickup. Sure, go for it. And I'm really debating keeping this guitar as something that I can just grab and noodle around with as opposed to putting it on reverb and selling it, which is kind of what I do with a lot of these reviews. I buy a guitar, review it, sell it on reverb to make room for new reviews and new guitars. But uh, this one's got me really thinking. Anyway, that is my review for this guitar. If you liked this video, consider clicking the like button. If you like content like this, consider subscribing. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel grow. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I will talk to you next time.